Yes, thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to come here to Mount Sinai. I've got a lot of friends here, and it's just a, a privilege to be speaking at the symposium. Can people in the back hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, all right, good. Just checking. Oh, yes, Roxana. Great to hear your voice as well. So I am uh, debating on orbit, and I'm the pro, right? So these are my disclosures. Uh, none are super relevant to this talk. Uh, however, I do have some additional disclosures. Uh, I didn't actually ever agree to do this debate, just to point that out to the organizers. When I agreed to speak, actually, the invitation was on a different topic. And I only saw a week ago that I was the pro orbitist speaker. And I would have never come to an interventional meeting full of interventionalists and take the pro position on orbit. It would be a stupid thing to do. So I just ended up in this situation. In fact, uh, <laughs> it was a good tactic. Uh, and just a few weeks ago, I actually uh, helped co-author a piece uh, critiquing the orbit trial. So why would I actually come now and uh, defend it? So it's an odd position to be in. But uh, in that uh, piece uh, written along with uh, Bernard Gersh and Gabriel Stegg and uh, Bob Harrington and uh, Stefan Vinci, Decker, uh, we laid out the strengths and limitations of the trial. And like any trial, it had both strengths and limitations. I'll focus on the strengths, since that's um, uh, what I'm supposed to do. It, it was a reasonable hypothesis. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, I wouldn't critique them for uh, asking the question. That's what good uh, clinical scientists do. It's an appropriate primary endpoint. Exercise time matters. We say that uh, it's an important part of quality of life and, and coronary artery disease and heart failure as well. Uh, time on treadmill is a reasonable thing to look at. It had a sham control, which really elevated the science, I think, of PCI trials. A successful blinding, uh, another strength of the trial. I'd say appropriate PCI technique as well. There were some uh, uh, wire, FFR wire related uh, dissections, it's true, but still, overall, I thought good technique uh, and good results. It was independent funding, so that also, I think, gives them a plus. And it was transparent reporting uh, of the protocol. They showed us their coronary angiograms on all their patients. So, uh, overall, I would say, uh, you know, job well done, Orbita investigators. Uh, uh, Professor Francis uh, was the um, uh, senior author of the. Uh, uh, paper and uh, in his Twitter feed, he actually wrote here that he liked my list because it contained some highbrow stuff. Uh, al although it was preceded by saying, next I will work on the meat of the whining. But, uh, you know, it's a compliment mixed in with a uh, insult there. But that's okay. I'll, I'll take whatever I get. Uh, so uh, Dr. Crittany actually wrote a beautiful uh, editorial on a recent analysis uh, from the Orbiter trial, and uh, I thought it was very balanced. Uh, I thought it was very fair. You know, it, one of the problems with the initial Orbiter publication, in, in fairness, wasn't so much the uh, uh, publication itself, but, you know, as I, I cited here back in February, it's even higher now, there were 1,700 uh, tweets about it. And if you followed the Twitter debate about Orbit, it was really pre pretty vitriolic on both sides. That is, people that were bashing Orbita were kind of harsher than they needed to be, and people defending it and bashing PCI were uh, much harder than they needed to be. And it didn't help that that particular editorial was a bit over the top, uh, referring uh, to the Orbit trial as the last nail in the coffin of PCI. So uh, actually, this editorial, uh, very balanced, uh, very well done. But, um, you know, in uh, talking about Orbiter trial and, and its uh, design, I have to go back a little bit to uh, renal denervation, where there were a bunch of unblinded studies that showed that renal denervation caused whopping effects on blood pressure, reductions of 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury. Uh, fantastic. Who wouldn't have this? Actually, it'd be unethical to do a randomized sham control trial with these results. We should just offer this to patients, right? That makes sense. A lot of people were saying that. But then, of course, when a proper randomized clinical trial d was done with a sham control and blinding, uh, the effect uh, size was really um, uh, very, very small. And the overall trial, not significant in some subgroups, uh, you know, modest single-digit reductions. And of course, the more recent randomized clinical trials with better renal denervation technology, you know, positive, but still six to seven millimeters or so of reduction. So uh, proof of concept, but you know, is that really ready for prime time for an invasive procedure that's expensive? I don't know. But at any rate, showing the value of sham control in one setting, uh, I think the Orbita investigators have uh, now shown it for PCI. So what then of the fate of PCI for stable angina? 
Well, about 20% of PCI is for stable angina, though with the caveat that there has been some great inflation with respect to unstable angina. That is, there's an epidemic of unstable angina, and part of it might have to do with uh, a little bit of upcoding. But regardless, it seems like about 20% of PCI is for stable angina. We already knew from Courage uh, that there's no effect of PCI in stable coronary artery disease with respect to MI or death, at least in single vessel coronary artery disease. And everyone's waiting for the ischemia trial, though I don't know that it's going to answer everything, as people in the room are probably aware there's been a little bit of a change in the primary endpoint moving away from just purely hard endpoints. So um, whether that's going to answer all questions, probably not. Few trials ever do. However, I do think there's a way out uh, of the situation, and it might be with the invasive assessment of uh, the physiology and hemodynamic significance of lesions. And data from FAME2, for example, shows that a strategy of PCI based on FFR is pretty cost effective uh, versus a strategy of initial medical therapy and stable angina. And at least in my own sort of algorithm of how to approach patients with stable angina, uh, I think medical therapy has to be at first line, and by that I mean risk reduction therapies, things like statins uh, and aspirin, but then treatment of symptoms with beta blockers, nitrates, calcium channel blockers. It was interesting that patient we just saw there uh, with, uh, with a CT on ranolazine wasn't on a calcium channel blocker. So, you know, I'd make sure that patients are on really good medical therapy in terms of symptoms to the extent they can tolerate it. But then if they're still having angina, I think a functional study is still a useful test, see how long they can go on a treadmill, and if they can exercise, a pharmacological stress test. Uh, and if that stress test is abnormal, there's lifestyle limiting angina or intolerance to medications for angina, then proceed with angiography. And I would take it one step further. If the lesion is anywhere between 40 and 80 percent, I think an FFR or perhaps now an IFR uh, is in order to see if it's really ischemia causing. That doesn't guarantee that it's angina causing, but at least then you have good evidence that it's ischemia causing. So finally, just to put things in perspective, I think Orbita is an important contribution to the literature. Very little is gained by bashing this well-done trial. It does show that you can do sham controlled trials in PCI. That to me is an important contribution and does move the field forward. It does affirm that PCI really doesn't have a role when there's low angina burden. And uh, you know, it's uh, untruthful to say that there aren't patients out there with relatively low angina, atypical angina, that are getting PCI. And I think that's part of the reason and the trial caused such a um, uh, noise in the media because there are definitely cases of stenting going on for minimal angina, and this trial affirms that that shouldn't be done, as the guidelines also say. And finally, I'd just say for all those CTO aficionados out there and impella lovers and, and other folks like that, you ought to be worried because I think the orbit investigators may be coming after you too. Thank you very much for your attention.